And then what ends up happening is you condone it. No, you don't want to do that. You got to be smarter than that. You got to be like, hey, look here, man. I don't condone no violence. Let me get on the phone. Hey, man, look here, man. Look, man, I ain't with them people. Now, if you with them people, if you with them people now, if you with them people, then you go tweet, yeah, good job. And then you got to you gotta deal with the consequences that come behind that. So after Rick Ross goes to Canada and is attacked by some guys who are alleged to be a part of Drake's team, people have been speaking out and basically warning that this could turn into something really big. And one of the people who spoke out was Uncle Luke. Are y'all ready to talk about it? Let's juice. Come on, Blaze. It's a beat for me. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Voodoo Doll TV, back with a quick little Joe, so whatever the case may be. And this Rick Ross and Drake beef has really gotten out of hand. And some of the OGs are calling for somebody to step in because this could be quite crazy they're thinking it could be a situation where drake can't come to certain parts of america like miami or la and vice versa and it's kind of started to get real crazy now i want to touch on one thing i spoke about this i've done a live on it we've done uh videos on this whole situation and everybody thought it was just a rap beef you know it kind of got a little serious with name calling and family uh insertion and all that stuff but most people thought it would just stay on wax well it turns out after rick ross goes to canada and plays they not like us it turns out some guys jumps him behind the stage and things gets crazy. A couple of guys got knocked out. It was like insane. Rick Ross even was snuck. He even got hit. And it was just like, wow, like we hadn't seen anything that left the studio since the Biggie and Pac situation. So a lot of people were surprised that that even went that far. But ultimately, after the situation popped off in Canada, Drake went live to kind of like co-sign the whole situation. And this is what he had to say. Like never before, African woman, you're the one I adore. Happy Canada Day. See, I'm rapping still. Happy Canada Day to everybody. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers to the whole country. Mm -hmm. Our day today. Sun's out. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. So you guys saw Drake's response and even though he was not there and didn't actually come out and say he had anything to do with the situation, it's the subliminal posts like this that lead people to believe that he may have either sent these guys or he knows something about the entire situation behind the scenes. Now, a lot of people are wondering who were some of the intricate players. So let me start here. So this guy, his name is either Icyrus or Isiris. I can't really pronounce his name. But he's alleged to be a rapper from British Columbia and also a member of the gang Hells Angels. And it has already been alleged that Drake has some sort of ties with the Hells Angels. And this is the guy who actually snuck Rick Ross. I mean, like, he landed the punch, right? So this is one of the key players in this whole situation, which there were a lot of other guys. But there's also another guy in this situation that people are talking about. Now, this is Rick Ross DJ, DJ Sam Sneak. He's the one who was actually knocked out cold. Like, they literally had to carry this man out. And honestly, I felt bad for the guy because Rick Ross was able to escape and evade this whole situation while this guy was literally carried out of the situation. It was just disgusting. But ultimately, the rap beats then turned from the studio to the streets and people are speaking out about it. Now, I do want to bring this part up. Now, I can recall a situation where Lil Wayne spoke about his new artist, Drake, and he spoke about some advice he gave him, basically telling him like, yo, like you don't have to come out doing anything crazy, kind of stick to your Canada, your, your, your TV show type stuff. Don't speak about the gangster stuff because it's really not in you let's just kind of stick to what you know and I thought that was sound advice but apparently somewhere along the line Drake kind of like ventured away from that let's get into this audio of Wayne speaking about his advice to Drake 
I was the one to tell him, don't change anything. Don't think because you're coming over here by me that you got to start rapping about the things I rap about. Don't do none of that. Please rap about your little TV show, whatever you want to <laughs> rap about. Rap about girls. Do that. That's what you're good at. Don't start singing about killing nobody. Don't start singing about the streets. Yeah, talk about do what you know. Yeah, yeah the, like, keep it Canadian, man. <laughs> keep it Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, Wayne tried to warn him about how crazy this stuff can get. And again, we haven't seen anything like this where it left the studio since Pac and Biggie. A lot of people, if they're old enough to remember that situation, these brothers both ended up unalived. And I think that what's happening is a lot of people are concerned that this is what this can ultimately lead to. And I'm not saying that it will, but it can since people have put hands on each other, right? And I think Drake should have took Wayne's advice because at the end of the day we all know Drake isn't cut from that cloth he's just not he is just it's just that he's not and I don't think Rick Ross is neither but I do think Rick Ross keep people around him or there's some people in Miami who's not going to take kindly to what happened to Rick Ross in Canada so I'm just saying for those purposes I just wouldn't kind of mess with that if I were you know Drake but ultimately here we are now before we get into Uncle Luke I wanted to share 50 Cent's response to this he went live with Earthquake and Keith Sweat and we all know 50 Cent has this back and forth beef with Rick Ross for years and they were kind of like the OGs that was making fun of Rick Ross y'all check this out it was kind of funny check it out you saw that here like, happened in Canada Rick Ross got fucked up man. <laughs> 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 oh, his bodyguards need to resign, nigga. Bro, them bro, niggas, bro. they failed the number one thing. They ain't got nobody body, including <laughs> their own. Sorry, I mean, sorry, my nigga just stayed down that bitch and kept letting them. Yes, they ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> Something ain't right. All right, so you guys heard what they had to say, and it's funny, and it's all fun and games online, honestly, until somebody actually gets hurt, and that's literally what happened. But y'all know 50 Cent Control, that's what he does. I didn't know that Keith Sweat had this level of petty. I expected it from Earthquake, but Keith, I didn't expect that from you. I ain't gonna lie. But anyway, it was just appropriate for the something, something just ain't right. I cannot. <laughs> Let's move on. Now, on a serious note, Uncle Luke enters the chat now uncle luke is a 305 miami dade county resident also a veteran of the game he's been around for years and years and years he was actually there with tupac and in the tupac and biggie situation he was friends with both of these guys and he has seen a lot and what he's seeing with this rick ross versus drake thing is not setting right with him and he wanted to come up as an og and actually give them some good advice on what to do and what not to do and how this can potentially be extremely dangerous. Now, I will say this. I love this message from him because basically what he's saying is, hey, this can get really bad really quickly. And you don't want that. You don't want a situation to where you can't come to certain places. He can't go to certain places because basically Drake is not cut from this cloth, like I said, and he don't want to have those type of problems as it pertains to him coming to America. So I think that... Uncle Luke stepping in at the time that he's doing is extremely commendable. It's extremely mature and it's extremely needed because we've all seen with drill music how this thing can actually go in real life. And we don't want that, you know, rap beef is rap beef. That's one thing. But you don't want to end up having to bury people and things of that nature. So what I'll do is this. I'll leave you guys with the live from Uncle Luke. You guys don't forget to like and subscribe the video and let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm very interested in your thoughts and what you think about this whole situation. And do you believe that this is going to actually leave wax and leave the studio and get into the paint of the streets? Let me know. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. This whole fighting 
uh, my boy Ross and his guys in Canada. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. That don't happen. That don't supposed to happen. And what's more unacceptable is when Mr. Drake liked the post. That also is unacceptable. I expect more out of Mr. Drake. When there is violence, when there is violence, you don't condone it. You should be bigger than that. Mr. Drake, you should be bigger than that. When there's violence, you don't condone that. You don't like like no posters and all that because here's what happens. We, there's always a backlash of it all. Here's what happens when now you've inserted yourself, even if you were not involved, half of the country think you set the man up. They book a show in in Canada and you send your goons out there uh, to agitate and start a fight with Ross. And y'all do what you do on the, on the TV. Half the country think that. When you, Mr. Drake, like the post, you just inserted yourself into violence toward Mr. Ross and his crew. Now, let me just say this. As a broker, a piece for Tupac and Biggie, I seen how this shit end, man. I mean, these other young guys, we're going to have to have a conversation with a lot of these other young guys who dying, these senseless deaths and and these songs and all that. They, y'all, y'all brothers are talented. Y'all got to understand, y'all are talented. Y'all don't need that. Y'all, y'all talent is fuck. Y'all getting people to buy the records. People are buying your records because people are buying your records because they like the music. They like what you're saying in the records. So leave it there, young fellas, young fellas. But now these grown ass ones right here, Mr. Drake and Mr. Ross. When you like the post. And you on there doing your little, okay, it's a beautiful day in Canada. And you like the post. You just inserted yourself in some shit. Now, look how this all play out. I'll keep it 1,000. Look how it all play out. Oh, so half the country thinking that you, uh, Rostin played the record, the Kendrick Lamar record, and he got jumped on because he played the Kendrick Lamar record. So now you got a whole West Coast of people. They at your head. Oh, oh, that's what we doing? You don't need that, Mr. Drake. You don't need to be confined. You're too talented. I like you. I got friends that like you. I don't know you personally. Don't need to know you personally. But you're too talented to insert yourself in some shit that you're not really you're not really about to have a whole whole coast at your head you don't want that I don't want that for you now here's how this shit works out because again look I had the same conversation with Biggie and Pop I'm the probably one of the only few niggas that could talk to them straight up I was on the road with Biggie when people would be singing Biggie songs in the stadium. While no singing pop this song while Biggie on stage. I seen this thing. And I've seen this man, you know, like man, I'm not really about that. I I love Buddy. Biggie never felt Biggie never uh jumped into the shit. Biggie never said anything. He he was like, look, man, I'm leaving that shit alone, man. I, I ain't really on that. I, I talked to Biggie. I talked to Pop. I went to Chug Nightclub as soon as Pop got out of jail. And had a conversation with him on this shit here. Hey, Pop, look here, man. Same thing I'm saying to y'all. Leave this shit alone, boss. 
Because it's not going to be the rapper pull the trigger. It's not going to be the rapper pull the trigger. It's not going to be the rapper that robs somebody. It's not going to be the rapper that, that do some some. No, it's going to be somebody looking for a come up. It's going to be somebody looking for a come up. Or it's going to be some super fan who going to then do the, do the shooting. You won't be knowing where it's coming from. So I would have expected Mr. Drake to, to, to be like, yo, I don't condone violence. That ain't what it is. I don't, you know, I don't have nothing to do with that or none of that. You, you feel me? Because y'all can play the little games where you're talking on this, on this, this social media shit and you're doing your little texting and you're tweeting and you're talking and all the, however y'all say whatever y'all want to say about each other. You can do that on here. But when you go to put hands on people, when you go to put hands on people, that's when the shit go to a whole nother level. When you go putting hands on people that go to a whole nother level. So people didn't have to put hands on, on you. And then they can have a conversation about it. Somebody got, you got to be the bigger person than that. Y'all on here doing all this sticks and stones may hurt my bones. Word, word would never hurt me. Ain't nobody putting no hands on nobody, but until now, See, all these dudes going to get on here and they're going to talk that sucker shit and all that and they're going to think this is a game. This is not a game. Because you put your hands on, on your homeboys put their hands on. They did not put their hands on Ross. They put their hands on Sam and them other people who are with Ross. The rapper never gets hands put on them. It's the other people, and then it's the other people that really be by their life. It be the other people who be with the rapper who really on that shit. The rapper just takes these other people who be with them because they're in them streets every day, and they take them with them to get them out of the streets to try to save their lives. But then now when you go to put your hands on them dudes, there, them dudes about their life. They ain't with the sucker shit. I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm giving you, I'm putting you up on game now. You ain't never seen no rapper with no bunch of Valor Victorian scholars uh, uh, and all that. What we do is we take our dogs, dudes who we came up with, and we try to show them a better life. We take them around the world. We put them on the plane. We fly them over here. You come on, man. Come on, man. Cause I already know you hard in them streets. Let me show you some different. Let me let me put you on game. Let me Let me get you in this business some kind of way so you can change your life. But then now when you put that street shit on one of these streets, dude, in this rap game, bruh, the kid who was laying down, the kid who was laying down on the ground, I'm going to just leave that like that. So it, it ain't the rapper. It's not the rapper. The rapper never gets touched. The rapper never gets touched. He gets backed up. He may get a little push or shove, but then it's the guys around. And then what ends up happening is you condone it. No, you don't want to do that. You got to be smarter than that. You got to be like, hey, look here, man. I don't condone no violence. Let me get on the phone. Hey, man, look here, man. Look, man, I ain't with them people. Now, if you with them people, if you with them people now, if you with them people, then you go tweet, yeah, good job. And then you gotta you gotta deal with the consequences that come behind that. It ain't gonna be the rapper that touch you. It's gonna be the people who are around you. And for all you other guys who think this is a joke, everybody else who think it's a joke, it's not a joke, boss. And I I expect more out of my elder rappers. Everything ain't funny. Everything ain't joke business. Everything ain't joke business. I expect guys who've been in the game for a long time. This is not the time when people go to putting hands on people. This is not the time to joke. This ain't no fucking joke, bro. This is not the time to joke, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't joke. And then when you invoke 305 in that, that you don't want to do. 
just one thing about it. We got a whole bunch of people down here that, that I said a long time ago. We got a whole bunch of people down here that I said a long time ago. Y'all need to check these people at the door. But then, obviously, we had a lot of groupy-ass people around here start bringing these dudes around here and allowing them to just come run up and down here. But but they running around on South Beach. Let me just let y'all know that right now. That's South Beach. The door could close for all you motherfuckers real quick. The door could close for everybody. Don't invoke 305 in your jokes about that situation because you you invoke a whole a whole situation so play your little games with your words if you want to do wordplay with ross and anybody else do your little wordplay with all that but don't say keep 305 out your mouth i'm just i'm just telling you right now because it, it, it this shit is it, everybody everybody has some has a part of their city where people really bleed this shit. Everybody has a part of their city. I don't care whether you're from Raleigh, North Carolina, you could be from Fayetteville, you could be from Brooklyn, you could be from the Bronx, you could be from Inglewood. You could everybody. You got people on, on, everywhere that bleed this shit. They ain't really with the Hollywoodness. I'm telling you right now. It's a lot of people who ain't buy, ain't and don't play like that. So when you're doing your little games with the with your rappers and you're running off at the mile and you're joking them and all that, don't joke, don't joke my city. I'm telling you that right now. Just don't joke the city, boss. Don't joke the city. We ain't no jokes. That shit you see, we are not South Beach. What you see over there on South Beach, that's them over there. People down here bleed and shit. Don't joke. Don't joke the city. So I'm just going to leave that like that. But for the most part, people, as an elder statesman that has seen two of my good friends, Biggie and Park, die senselessly, and it wasn't by them pulling the trigger on them, each other, it was the people that surround them, I would hope that you two gentlemen Get your shit together. Mr. Drake and Mr. Mr. Ross, because I don't want this to end like that. It shouldn't end like that. I'm going to be the elder statesman of it all. You don't want that. I leave it like that. Y'all can cut this motherfucker up however y'all want to cut it up. But I said it and I stand firm on it. Y'all have a nice night. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo dog time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo dog is? The nigga you just had up here. <laughs>